we're going to do is we're going to look at some hands that represent good boards to the three barrel or good times to the three barrel, uh, taking into the considerations we talked about. Then ANSI is going to actually analyze two hands that I've played at one, two, um, where I use three barrels and kind of say, give my backstory for these players and why I did what I did, and ANSI can kind of rate um, his thoughts of whether they were good or not. And then we're going to look at two spots where three barrel is probably not a good idea, where Ansky, uh owns me at 510. So let's um, so go ahead and get started. So this first hand, uh, ace queen offsuit, uh, pretty you know straightforward raise, and I'll let, I'll let Ansky take the action from here. Mm -hmm. So far, this hand is pretty standard. I think it's a pretty good card to just follow up on on the turn. Um, obviously, not always, but you know once once you make that bet, it's a good spot to keep going. Now, I'd much prefer betting that river if it was a club, but even though it's a blank, it still is all right. And this is especially good against a. Uh, what is called a yawn tag here, I guess, um, because this is sort of what we're talking about in that, I mean, I was talking about this before, that sort of when the first overcard comes and then the second overcard comes that's lower than the first one, it's harder to represent that card because basically why would I, you know, it's hard to, for me to credibly represent just a jack here because, uh, you know, there's, you know, betting second pair here is a little bit thin. Uh, I mean, I, I might do it. it. It depends on what jack I had in, in the situation, I guess. But, um, you know, when you're when you're betting here, you're 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 definitely betting partially because it's a jack, and now it's psychologically, at at the very least, going to be harder for your opponent to call with you know just like a six or just a nine or a pocket pair. Um, but even though you might not actually, even though the jack might not necessarily be that relevant of a hand, but either way, this is generally a pretty good spot for a triple barrel. You know, with the jack, the king and the jack coming, um, and the relatively dry board, it's not too there aren't too many draws your opponent can put you on, I'd say it's a generally a pretty good spot. So, Nancy, one thing I kind of want you to hit on here um, is, you know, the reason we call this guy Yon Tag is um, because we're going to assume that his preflop range is is not very well balanced. So, if we're thinking of the types of hands he can call on this flop that he chose not to re-raise preflops, so if we can factor out certain hands from his range, why do you think spots like this, or especially had the flush got there, had, we, had this jack been the jack of clubs, why do you think it's going to be better against a guy who we think, you know, is, is capable of folding a hand like 9-8 here, um, but isn't going to, you know, isn't going to ha be trapping us on the flop, slow playing, you know, pocket kings, and then and we're worried about them having those kind of hands in their range. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the thing is, in this sort of board, even if he is about well balanced, it's just so few hands that he's well that he's balancing well with that matter. Since basically pocket tens is the same as eight nine here, you know, and the only real hands here that we probably would never get a fold from are obviously aces, you know, ace king, um, pocket kings pocket jacks, and probably pocket queens wouldn't fold either. Um, and that's just, even though there's not much of a difference necessarily between pocket queens and pocket tens if I'm never betting a jack, but it's just a psychological thing. You don't really expect people to fold queens there. 